So the OnePlus 5, has this phone really added up to be the true flagship killer that it's intended to be? I've had some time to really use this phone and I'm now ready to give it my full review. I'm your host Ben on the Lover of Tech channel and this is my review of the OnePlus 5. Looking at the internal specifications, this is shaping up to be on paper one of the most powerful Android phones ever to be made to date. The CPU internally leads the Snapdragon 835 octa-core based processor. The GPU is powered by the Adreno 540 GPU. This particular model that I'm using has a RAM capacity of 6GB but there is an 8GB model and this is using the new LPDDR4X RAM standard. Storage for this particular model is 64GB though there is a 128GB model and this is the UFS 2.1 dual lane storage which gives you fast read and write speeds but the memory is non-expandable there is no support for an SD card. And the battery capacity is 3300 milliamps, but there is no protection against the elements with no water and dust resistance rating officially at all. Now let's jump over to the design. The overall design of the phone consists of Gorilla Glass 5 at the front and the sides and the frame of the phone is actually all aluminium construction and all the way to the rear. So the display technology being used is a 5.5 inch 1080p AMOLED display with your traditional 16 by 9 aspect ratio but with improved support for new color display profiles such as sRGB and the DCI-P3 color space standard. You still find the location of the home button at the bottom half of the display, doubling up as a capacitive key and fingerprint scanner. Front facing 60 megapixel selfie camera with f2.0 aperture, LED notification light and finally the earpiece for phone calls. At the bottom of the phone is where you will see the speaker grill, the USB Type-C connector, microphone and the headphone port. Now it's hard to deny that the design elements of this phone are very reminiscent to what Apple have done with the iPhone 7 Plus and in some cases is actually very 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 close. But OnePlus themselves were not really in a position to design a phone originally to how they wanted it to. They did kind of make it clear in the specs and also in terms of the keynote that if they wanted to they could have made the design more futuristic but the budget just wasn't there and it wasn't something that was within their power to do it. Overall the design is not original it's not really inspiring but it's functional 7.3 millimeters in terms of thickness it does the job there's curvature to the phone that fits into your hand what can i say the design of the oneplus is what it is when we move over to the rear you'll see that there is a new dual camera setup the primary camera is a 16 megapixel f 1.7 aperture lens with electronic image stabilization for the secondary camera what you have is a 20 megapixel camera that is an f 2.6 telephoto zoom lens which gives you lots of zooms on images and videos also flanked with a dual led flash and noise cancelling microphone now for the performance now this is where the oneplus 5 really comes into its own with a subtle partnership with near stock android 7.1.1 and oxygen os the ui interface styling is definitely a respect to the full look of stock android on phones such as the google pixel but oneplus have added their own software enhancements to make the user experience bespoke to the end user for examples, within the settings menu, under the customizations tab, you're able to change the alert slider actions for silent, do not disturb, ring, so it's tailored to how you receive your notifications, which is great. Buttons such as the capacitive keys can be moved to on screen or actually switch from left to right in terms of the recents in the back. You can enable things like quick launch with enabling it where you can double tap the power button to actually launch the camera wherever you are on the phone. Home, recents, back button configuration, You've even got gesture controls for specific app launches, double tap to wake the screen and finally the status bar for things such as the battery notifications as well as icon manager and so forth. Now I personally may not necessarily be the biggest stock Android fan in terms of its looks but there's no denying it. I can respect the performance, the fluidity, the native features such as multi window built in finally. This just means that OnePlus's Oxygen OS enhancements make it far less of an intrusive addition but gives you the ability out of the box to customize the OS experience to your liking. Overall, the main selling point of the OnePlus is the internal specifications, the software integration, the fluidity and the performance with things like opening apps or that onboard RAM for task switching in terms of app switching absolutely is boss on this phone. The solid RAM management indeed when you're moving between different apps and the performance to hold these apps where they were. This is the selling point internally. This is where they can pride themselves and say on paper with the amount of RAM 
and the top of the line Snapdragon 835 processor that this is a very very fast and powerful phone. But there is one thing, one thing I noticed when I was using this phone over my period of time was the scrolling effect did not feel as smooth as I would like it and it was really hard for me to put my finger on it but after doing some investigation I realized that there was a slight touch latency display on the phone which was a shame because it really deterred away from the fact that the phone is so quick and fluid that when you're scrolling you can see and you can actually feel it now it's not necessarily a deal breaker but it's something that personally i noticed enough for it to be something that deterred away from the great speed and fluidity of the phone and i really wish this is something that oneplus could have nailed on a hardware level and it really takes away from the experience but hey Apart from that, it's not necessarily too much of a deal breaker, but it just had to be mentioned. Now, if you watch my first video with unboxing the OnePlus 5, which I will link in the cards up in the description and below, you realize that the packaging on the phone is dual camera for clearer photos. There was a lot of emphasis and with the camera, OnePlus decided to opt for a dual camera lens setup and on paper it looks promising stating that they had close work with DxO Mark in terms of their camera processing and also their camera rating in terms of performance. And it's a bit of a hit and miss and here is why. Definitely in the right conditions, the 60 megapixel images are clear, nice, as expected in good lighting, good performance, the sharpness and the clarity is there. My biggest issue with the camera on the OnePlus 5 is the lack of optical image stabilization. The software gyroscopic electronic stabilization works decent enough in video, especially in 1080p mode, as you're going to see some footage of it here. But when moved into 4K, 4K absolutely just falls apart. 4K, there is no stabilization at all. The crop factor is there. The crop factor is also there on 1080p as well, which necessarily doesn't make it that pleasing and it just makes the footage not that usable. It's a shame because having optical image stabilization was something that was available on the OnePlus 3 and the OnePlus 3T. And although they were being ambitious with the dual camera setup, the images end up being soft and it doesn't really come out as clear as you'd want the images to be and the image is just shaky and not usable. In turn, no OIS just means that low light performance is affected. Although there is an f1.7 aperture lens, not having the ability to have long exposure and the pixel micron size being at 1.12, it doesn't really make for great low light performance and that's something that's just such a big miss. You've got the secondary camera which is a 20 megapixel telephoto lens which gives you the lossless zoom. But when you look at the UI in interface when you press the lossless zoom button it goes from 1x to times 2x but actually the lossless zoom is only working at 1.6x so i question why oneplus couldn't just put the 1.6s because it almost gives the impression that it's working at times 2x the images do work in terms of the lossless zoom but the images do come softer because you're going beyond that 1.x and you're losing the detail. As expected, the front facing 16 megapixel camera for the selfie shot is sharp. It does have a crop factor because in video mode, it is using electronic stabilization, which is decent enough. The images look great. It's something that can be passed and can be used. When looking at the UI interface of the camera, it's overly simplistic for my liking. And it's likely a case where it's mirrored pretty much what Apple are doing with the iPhone, but you do get slightly more in camera control so things like being able to change the video quality from 1080p to 4k or 720p and also shooting modes such as pro mode and depth effect however there is no in-camera settings or external camera settings that allows you to change the still image resolution away from 60 megapixels which to me is just a miss but it's something that has to be stated it might not necessarily be too much of a big deal overall the camera experience is decent at least depth effect is something that is a hit and miss it's sometimes a nice blurred effect that you can have but it's not something that works as consistently well as i would like the camera in itself the experience is good enough it's gonna get the job done the overall experience is in my opinion a little bit more compromised than i would have liked it just doesn't mean that as a flagship killer the experience is really up there now natively this being a dual sim international variant phone in terms of the option of being able to use two SIM cards at once, the convenience is absolutely amazing. It's something I really like and it makes up for the lack of SD card support because the internal storage is already really high. The convenience of being able to have that is really great. 
Having a headphone port is something that I really praise every company that is sticking to their guns to make sure that they deliver high quality audio through and the OnePlus does not disappoint. Also the bottom facing loudspeaker is really loud. It's usable even in loud environments to be able to enjoy loud audio and clear audio on the loudspeaker when you're actually listening to the things like music and videos which is really great to see and I really enjoyed the loudspeaker experience on the OnePlus 5. So with a battery capacity of 3300 milliamps with a 1080p AMOLED display overall you should experience a solid battery life in most cases and truth saying that gaining around four to five hours of screen on time pretty much I was getting around all day battery life so the battery experience has been really great but the biggest saving grace to the battery experience on the OnePlus is dash charging. So I did a demonstration with dash charging, which I'm gonna place in the cards above and also in the description below, comparing it to the S7 and the S8, which use quick charging, dash charging, especially within the first 30 minutes of one hour, absolutely flies. And it's one thing that really aids in having to make sure that your recharge time is really quick and really efficient. Overall, the battery experience is something I've been really happy with the OnePlus, and I have to give them credit for it. They've managed it really well. So what's been my overall conclusion on the OnePlus 5 after using it over this period of time? Well, I have to say that this overall is a very solid smartphone and it's almost impossible to make a bad smartphone, especially when you're aiming it at a flagship status. But it's just the little things that you have to really critique with this phone to be able to see whether it really holds up to what it's intended to be. Now, I'm gonna start with the positives and definitely the internal specifications on paper right now this is on paper the most powerful android flagship phone you're gonna find top of the line snapdragon 835 cpu six or even eight gigabytes of lpddr4x ram 64 gigabytes or 128 gigabytes of internal ufs 2.1 storage the list just goes on and the performance shows it the optimization with software with android 7.1.1 with oxygen os with stock Android nearly there with slight optimizations, the fluidity and the speed, how apps open, how the operating system moves, and even how it does RAM management is absolutely phenomenal and it flies and it shows. But probably that is the main thing that you're paying for this phone. I just feel like everything else around this phone is too much of a compromise to really be a flagship killer. And here's my reason why. One, there's no protection against the elements IP67 or IP68. Camera doesn't have any form of OIS optical image stabilization. Yes, although it does use EIS with electronic, but this does not work in 4K. So 4K footage is actually really shaky. And because of the lack of OIS, the low light performance, although it does have an F1.7 aperture, is absolutely not on point. The low light performance is just about passable, but actually there's a lot more noise because the pixel size is actually much smaller compared to if they had actually gone for a much bigger pixel size. And Next is the display. The display itself just to me does not get bright enough to be able to use outdoors. The lack of 2K display, I can almost forgive it to a certain extent, but the not being able to actually use it outdoors where the brightness doesn't get bright enough, to me, it just makes the phone not usable all round. And I'm only ever comfortable to actually use it indoors while I know the brightness is sufficient. But I do have to admit, it being an AMOLED panel is something I really do like and the different color profiles that are being used is something that's really good. I just really wish the display was absolutely a bit more brighter for me to be able to use it outdoors. But last thing that really triggered me when I was actually using this phone was a touch latency display. It's hard to really know how it is unless you're using it alongside another flagship phone to actually see how the scrolling effect is. And it's such a subtle thing that I was just noticing it more and more. And it's a shame because it went against the fact that the phone is so fast and fluid that the touch display when it came to things like scrolling just didn't feel as responsive as I would want it to be. Now, it's not something that is really hard to notice when you're using the next one of a phone, but when you're using it by itself, you're not really gonna notice it. So take it with a grain of salt. It's just something I noticed that I didn't really feel comfortable using. I just think that overall, this is a flagship contender. This is not necessarily a flagship killer. I think OnePlus need to go back to the drawing board. Look at what they did with the OnePlus One where the price was so competitive for what you were getting compared to now where the price is so high, but it just feels like it's too high with too many compromises. I think they either go back to their drawing board or actually just make a no compromise flagship phone where there's no sacrifices at all. Anyway, this is my review of the OnePlus 5. I'm your host, Ben. 
I'm going to be signing out. Follow my social media presence on my Instagram, my Twitter, and my Facebook fan page, and also my Snapchat to see behind the scenes of when I'm putting up a new video. Like and subscribe. Be sure to hit the notification bell for new content every single week to be able to see what's happening with the latest tech. Again, I'm your host, Ben, signing out, and I'll see you next time.